Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video! In today's video we're gonna talk about 5 tips to make better maps part 2. Now we're gonna cover mostly how to make better maps using events. So it's not gonna be directly with how to map inside the editors but rather how you can use events in a way that will polish and make better maps for the players to enjoy. So let's get started! Okay, so we're gonna start with the exact same map that we left off with the first part of the tips to make better maps. If you've never seen the first part, then you can click on the link that should appear on the screen. And if no links appear because whatever the reason with YouTube, then the link should be inside the description as well. Alright, so we're gonna start right ahead with tip number one of the day. Now, once again, it's not gonna be anything that can be visualized directly on the maps because it's directly linked to events which will only appear while you are playing the game. So let me just launch it and showing it to you right now. The first tip of today's is using pictures to embellish your maps. Now as you can see here it's very very subtle but we have a picture which gives us some kind of lighting ray effects from the sun at the top left corner of the screen that you probably can see when we're walking over the water it's more obvious. Now while this is a little subtle, using pictures to embellish your maps this way, either by using fogs or starlights or light rays that you see right now or whatever you have in mind for cool ideas, is always a great way to embellish your maps. So to do so, it's super simple. Just use the show pictures, like shown in my previous tutorials how to use it, set the correct image that you want to show, and then you can also apply a tint on the picture to fit your needs. And there we go. Of course, launch it inside a parallel event, of course, and that's if this will switch A so that nothing's gonna happen once the image has been shown. And that's it. You're good to go. And you got a tiny better map because of it. It's not major or anything, but it's always a nice touch to add on a map. All right, so moving on with tip number two. Does anybody at home wants to take a guess at what it might be? Well, let me show you. Tip number two is using the tint screen, of course. So now, just because we make a little bit more orange kind of light map, we're having this nice, that nice effect with combination of the first pictures that is currently the sunset inside our game. So the sun is going down, night will be there soon, and the players can actually see and feel that simply by using a little tint and the picture as well. Now, once again, it's super simple to apply this. All you have to do is use the command uh, on the second tab, tint screen, and apply the color you want to do. In my case, all I had to do really, it's super simple because you have some presets inside RPG Maker, and all I had to do is click on sunset. And it set up the parameters just right to get that kind of sunset effect. And honestly, that just feels perfect and that feels great. So always try to apply a tint as much as you can inside your game, whether you are inside the forest, in the basement, or in a dungeon. Alright, so moving on with tip number three, which is one of the most important inside RPG Maker games, is to add some kind of animations whatsoever inside your maps. Now, as you can see here, I've added a little smoke that's coming out from the chimney, which is stepping, of course, and we got a little... I think the current name is Geyser, Geyser, whatever, something like that. Anyway, that's kind of water that is just overflowing through the little town over here. Now, we're not exactly sure why it is doing this case, and maybe you can have a quest over this, but in any case, the most important thing inside the maps is to always have something on the screen for the players to be animated. And that can be like water, that can be smokes, that can be a lot of things. It's really hard to the anima imagination. Now, if I was not that lazy, I could have also implemented a little door effect where actually the door of the house wouldn't be completely closed. And so it would be moving a little bit. But I'm lazy, so I'll leave it up to, up to you. It's not that hard to do inside Photoshop. But as you can see, the, the point here is that only by having a couple more animations, I just wanted to make you a little comparison. Compared to that part of the map where absolutely nothing is happening and the one over here where we have two animations and 
actually three if we count the water inside the fountain. Which one for you feels the more pleasing to look at? You most likely answer the second one, right? Why? Because humans are not entirely attracted by things that are static or not moving, period. Like we're kind of like attention seeking junkies when it comes to whatever happens around of us. And so if something happens out of the ordinary or just like something seems to be moving a lot more than any other things, the eyes are ultimately drawn to that no matter what happens, right? And so the same logic can apply inside video games, specifically for RPG meters, since it's so easy to make a, um, a map that feels static where nothing happens, that nothing here is really appealing for anybody. So it's really important that you always keep in mind to try to implement a couple of animations for the players just so that they feel like they're inside a vibrant and like true living world. All right, we're going to go ahead and move to the fourth tip of today's video. But just before that, if you could take two seconds to click on the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that will be super appreciated. And if you already did it, well then thank you, you're awesome. All right, so the fourth tip of today's video is had life inside your maps. And when I say life, I mean NPCs, but also specifically animals or insects even. So whether it is fish, frogs, dogs, owls, people inside the city, fox, raccoons, bears, deers, buck, you name it, there's always something you can put inside a map. If you're inside a whole basement, you can put a rat, you can put a mice, it doesn't matter. It's just that it reinforced the third tip of the videos on animations, but it also reinforced the fact that the player is actually inside a living and breathing world. And that leaves us finally with the last tip of today's video, which is sound effects. Now, I cannot stress this enough, and I know that's not the first time I give you this advice and this tip, but that's because that's how important it is. Always implement the correct sounds, correct backgrounds, and go all out with sound all the time to give an, a great effect on your map that just feels alive and awesome. All right, that's already it for today's video. Now make sure to like, subscribe for more content, and if you have any comments or questions, leave it below inside the comment section. As always, I'll see you later for a new video. Bye! Goodbye.